Hey, welcome everyone to another of our online Tunes University Science Lectures. Uh, we took some suggestions a few weeks ago of the types of topics people might like to hear and thank you all for submitting your ideas. Uh, when we put them all in front of us, uh, we felt that something that might capture the most attention would be looking at the science and particularly the chemistry behind cooking. So that's what we're going to talk about today and specifically focusing on the chemistry involved in baking cookies. Now, to get the time in your passport for today's lecture, what we're asking you to do is first start off just by watching the lecture, and then afterwards take what you've learned to bake your own cookies uh, at home with the help of mum or dad or some, an adult who lives with you. So you don't have to follow our recipe, you can choose your own recipe, but make your own cookies. Take a photo of you making the cookies and of your end product. You can then upload those to the portal or you can show them to your in-school CUA coordinator to get one hour in your passport. So for the lecture and the making of the cookies, you'll get one hour in your passport. So cooking is a science. Every time you cook, every time you prepare food, science is involved. Now, technically, all, all chefs, you know, bakers, butchers, whoever it might be that's preparing food, they are scientists because they are performing their own scientific experiment. Much like in science, when you prepare food, you're using a set of materials or substances, so they could be your ingredients, and you're following a set list of instructions, which is like your recipe, to produce a result. Now, if you don't get the desired result, you might go back and you might change that recipe before you repeat it. And this is the same way that scientists change experiments until they get one that works and brings out the kind of desired results. Now, once scientists do get results, and then they do have an experiment that works well and gives them lots of information, they will publish it and they will share it so that other scientists around the world can repeat it. As when we're preparing food, we do the same thing. If we've got a recipe that we work, that works, that we know works and we think is really good, we might share it with people or we might post it online or put it in a book in the same way that scientists share their instructions, chefs share their own recipes. And so there really is a lot of overlap. Now, there are different reasons for preparing food. Okay, it might be safety reasons. For example, when you cook meat to a certain temperature, you do so so that you can get rid of any bacteria that might be inside the raw meat that could make you sick. So you bring it up to a certain temperature that you know kills the bacteria. You might also prepare some food to change the state of it. So to get a mixture that is a liquid, uh, you might prepare it in such a way that it turns into a solid like we're gonna do today with the cookies. And finally, you might also prepare food to stimulate a combination of different reactions so that the substances inside can create unique flavours or aromas, and that's something that we're going to talk about today as well. One constant though, when we're cooking, is the transfer of energy. You know, as we, whether you're baking biscuits, whether you're grilling meat, whether you're stewing vegetables, or you're chilling a cake, you are transferring kinetic or heat energy between your ingredients and their environment. Now, as we learnt during the Matter Matters lecture a couple of weeks ago, Adding energy can either break or removing energy can strengthen chemical bonds, which can initiate chemical reactions and change an ingredient's state of matter. And this is something that we often see when we add or remove energy to some ingredients while we're cooking. Now in this video for our cookies, we're gonna bake them in an oven set at 190 degrees Celsius. Now the temperature that we choose to cook our ingredients at is really important. Firstly, it needs to be warm enough to raise the temperature of our ingredients enough to initiate the necessary chemical reactions that we're gonna talk about later on. Secondly, these changes must take place in a suitable period of time. For example, with our cookies, we're gonna cook them probably for about 12 or so minutes. If we had a lower temperature and it took three hours to have to, for the cookies to cook, it wouldn't have the same impact and the cookies would turn out very differently. So choosing that temperature is really, really important. What we're gonna do now is head over to the kitchen and have a look through the different ingredients we're going to use and get them ready for cooking. So we're in the kitchen now, we're going to go through the different ingredients uh, for today's mixture. So it's a pretty standard uh, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Uh, we've got things like, we've got vanilla essence, that's going to add some flavour. We've got chocolate chips and we've got just regular white sugar. So these three ingredients in particular are, are really important for the flavour. We're going to cook them, we're going to in, induce some changes. It will bring out some slightly different flavors, but that's their primary role. Uh, we've got one egg to go inside. Now the egg as well has a role in flavor. Uh, so if you were to use a different, we'll use just a regular chicken egg. If you were to use an egg from a goose or a duck, it'd probably still work, but it's gonna taste a little bit different. 
Um, but eggs also have a key role in the texture. They're going to change the way the cookie actually feels when you bite into it. So they're important, not only for flavor, but also for texture. We've got butter. Looks like a lot of butter, probably is a lot of butter. Cookies aren't supposed to be healthy, I guess, but butter also plays a key role in both the texture and the flavor. Now, a butter is a combination effectively of fat, water, uh, and some other dairy compounds. So the water inside is gonna be really important for the shape of our cookies and also for sort of that crumbly texture, while the fat inside of it's gonna be important for flavor too. So butter has two roles. Uh, in the process, uh, probably best to let it get to room temperature or so before you add it, um, just so we're not shocking the cookies when we put it into the oven. Again, chemical reactions, this is what this one likes to take place slowly rather than jumping from a really, really cold environment, as four degree butter would be if it came out of the fridge, straight into a really, really hot oven. Finally, we've got our flour. Uh, now, flour is the main component of our mixture. There's probably more flour here than any of our other ingredients. Um, it's a really, really important part because it really adds the structure to our cookies. Flour contains at least two proteins, maybe more, and these proteins are what are going to be really important for holding our cookie together, and they will play a key role in the transfer of our, our the change when our mixture goes from being a liquid, we put it in the oven, and it's going to change into becoming a solid. The flour is going to play a really, really key role in that. You probably can't quite see it on the web. You're not seeing much of it on the screen there. There's also a very small amount of baking soda in there. Now, baking soda is a compound that in, produces CO2, and that carbon dioxide it produces is important for a, similar to um, eggs and butter, the texture, gives it that sort of crumbly texture as well. So we add a little bit, no, not very much, there's only about half a teaspoon of baking soda in there. Now, when we're preparing mixtures, it's really important that we, we mix everything in together. We want there to be an even spread of all of our ingredients throughout our entire mixture. That's really important for the flavor and for the texture. If we don't evenly mix the sugar through, for example, some parts of the cookie is gonna be really, really sweet and some parts won't be sweet at all. You know, if we don't have enough butter, the texture is gonna change throughout the cookie and all that sort of thing. So as with any chemistry experiment, we want the distribution of our different ingredients or our different materials to be nice and even. So we put them all in a bowl together, mix them all up so it's all evenly spread throughout. Uh, the other thing we'll do is we'll start off by mixing our wet ingredients. So that is our butter, our vanilla essence, and our egg. And then we'll add the sugar and the chocolate chips to that. Now, there's not a whole lot of chemistry happening there. But what you will find is that if you put the sugar in first and let it mix with the water from the egg and from the butter, it'll actually start to break down some of those sugar crystals. So that when you're actually biting your cookie, you don't find you're biting into a sugar crystal itself. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to mix all them together. I'm not going to make you watch that. And then I'll show you the end result before we chuck it into the oven. Okay, so I've finished mixing our ingredients together. Uh, I think I mentioned before that it would probably, it would go from a liquid to a solid while I was in the oven. It's actually already done that. Uh, at Before I added the flour, it was definitely a liquid. It was quite runny and it was easy to run this fork through. But now when I put the fork in there and bring it up so you can see it is quite solid already. So that change in state has already happened and it only happened once I added the flour into it. So now the mixture is properly mixed. Uh, I've been there for quite a few minutes trying to mix that up. So I think everything is evenly spread throughout our mixture. The next step for me is to put it onto a pan and chuck it in the oven so we can start that transfer of energy. Now, the first thing I've done is before I'm gonna put it onto a pan, I'm not gonna put onto any metal surface. I don't want it to stick. I've actually got what's called parchment paper or um, baking paper, just a simple little baking paper that you can find at any supermarket. Now, baking paper is also a creation of science. What it effectively is, is is paper pulp or regular paper, and it's been dissolved in an acid. And when it's dissolved in an acid, it actually makes the paper much more dense, but it also changes the surface energy. So it, without that surface energy, things aren't able to stick to it. And that's why we put this paper down onto a baking tray so that we can then put our ingredients onto there, and put it into the oven, and when we take it out of the oven, the cookies will come off nice and easily. Now, as we are preparing our cookies, we want to think about the shape we want. You may before have eaten cookies that have come out, you know, at Christmas, you might have had Christmas trees, little faces, that sort of thing. I'm just going to go for stock standard little circles today. So to do that, I just need to get a little bit of the cookie mixture, put it into a bit of a bowl and put it on the plate. Now I know that when I put it into the oven, they're going to flatten and spread out a bit. So I don't want to put my cookie balls too close together. 
and we're going to talk exactly about why that happens. So I'm just going to keep boiling them up and before I chuck them into the oven. Okay, so I've got the bowls. We're going to chuck them straight in the oven now. And I think the cooking time for this was about 12 minutes. So the oven's been set to 190 degrees. Put it in there. And then we're going to talk about the different reactions that are happening at different points throughout this process. So our ingredients are now in the oven. Uh, they're surrounded by the 190 degree heat of the oven. And that means lots of the energy from the oven is now going into our mixture. Now what that will do is raise the temperature of our mixture and as the temperature raises, different things are going to start happening. The first change will happen at 33 degrees Celsius because that's the temperature at which butter, which exists in a solid form, begins to melt down. Now butter, as I mentioned before, is a combination of milk, of, sorry, fat and water and at 33 degrees, that water and the fat will start to separate. Now that's important because as the water separates and, and will separates into water, it's going to start to spread out a little bit. The same way you would see water when you spill it, it doesn't just stay still on the floor, it kind of it spreads out. So what that will do, we put our cookies in as fairly tight round balls. It should begin to flatten them out so they're more, well, rounder shape and, and with a flat surface. And that's where if you have really, really, really wide flat cookies, that's because of the water or the content, the water content that's in there. Another change that we can't actually see, but we know happens, will occur at 57 degrees Celsius. So 24 degrees later, at 57 degrees Celsius, salmonella can no longer survive. Now, salmonella is important because it's the only part of this uh, experiment where we've got to worry about food safety. Salmonella is sometimes found in eggs, not all eggs, most eggs are perfectly safe to eat, but sometimes eggs can have salmonella in them. And if we don't kill that salmonella and we eat it, it leads to lots of um, gastrointestinal issues. You know, you do get quite sick from salmonella poisoning, sometimes even requiring hospitalization. So it is very important that we cook the egg or our mixture passes 57 degrees Celsius so that if our eggs have any salmonella in them, we would kill them off for sure. The next part of the process comes very quickly after that at 63 degrees Celsius. And once again, it involves the eggs. And, and once again, you can't really see it, but if you were in there touching it, you would feel it. Because what happens at 63 degrees Celsius is that we change the proteins that are present in the egg yolk. Now, usually proteins in egg yolk are present as individual tightly coiled strands. So lots and lots of proteins, but they're all on their own, tightly bunched up. At 63 degrees Celsius, there's enough energy in the protein to actually uncoil these strands so they're no longer tightly balled up and away from one another. They uncoil into longer strands and those strands can then bond together so they can actually start to join up to make much bigger strands of protein. Now this is a really important because it will change the yolk from a liquid. So when you have a raw egg, you will have seen yolk exist as a liquid. It changes it into a very, very soft solid. And this is important because it's it gives the texture to the cookie. So you know when you eat a cookie, it's not too dry in the middle. Sometimes it's soft and chewy. That's because we have changed the protein from the egg yolk. And that's why egg, eggs are such an important part of cookies. You might also, also put eggs in brownies for that same sort of reason. They're really, really important for that soft, chewy texture that people tend to like in baked goods. Now the next change happens at 80 degrees Celsius. Now I mentioned that we were putting baking soda in and that would impact the texture of our cookie. Now baking soda, when combined with an acid, it releases carbon dioxide. And there are some acids in our ingredients, not much. So there would already be some carbon dioxide being released before we reach 80 degrees Celsius. But at 80 degrees Celsius, the baking soda actually breaks down or decomposes. And when it's decomposing, it releases more carbon dioxide. So when we have the carbon dioxide being released, this is, you know, it's a gas, it wants to rise. And so that's what makes our cookies sort of grow a little bit. When you see something rise, you might've seen it in cakes as well. They're probably more obvious than the cookies we're using, we're creating, sorry, today, is that when a cake rises, it's because of that gas inside of it. Having gas inside the cookie also means that our cookies aren't gonna be too dense. So they're gonna be light and fluffy and, and really, really easy to eat and, and baking soda makes, makes that happen. 
The next change will occur at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, as we all know, that is the boiling point of water. I mentioned water that came from the butter earlier on. There would also be water present in the egg. So any water within the mixture will reach its boiling point and it will turn into a gas. And in the same way that the gas from carbon dioxide wants to escape, the, the water vapor also wants to escape. And so that will rise to the surface and almost pop little holes in the surface of our cookie as the water tries to escape. Now that's really, really important because we do want our cookies to be dry. We want them to be light, fluffy, but we want them to be dry as well. We're not looking for a really a moist cookie here. We're looking for a dry cookie. And so we need to bring that water up to its boiling point so that it's released from the cookie and lost into the atmosphere around or into the oven. So getting to 100 degrees, really, really important too. Now at 154 degrees, a really, really important reaction takes place. And this is because this is where we get the flavor of the cookies, you know? We want desserts or any sort of food really. Flavor is one of the most important things. And at 154 degrees, the Maillard reaction takes place. Now, when the Maillard reaction takes place, it involves the proteins and the sugars. Now there's protein present in our egg, there's protein present in our flour that we use, and the sugar is obviously very obvious in the white sugar we added and also within the chocolate that's in there. So at 154 degrees, the, pro the bonds that hold together the proteins and the sugars, they begin to break down. And so the protein and sugar rearrange themselves into new structures with new bonds. Now this reaction, this chemical reaction is important because what it does, it produces different flavor and aroma compounds. So at, when it gets to 154 degrees, that's when you're gonna start smelling that your cookies, they smell edible but also the flavor is really important too. And maybe not so obvious in our cookie mixture, but the Maillard reaction takes place in other foods as well. For example, when you cook a steak, you see the outside of it might turn into a dark brown while the inside still stays light pink. That's because on the outside of your steak, the Maillard reaction is taking place. The protein bonds are changing and rearranging themselves to create something new. And that's why the, the edge of a steak tastes different to the center of a steak. In this point, in this experiment though, or in this recipe that we're following, what we're looking to do is combine the different flavor and aroma compounds. So that's where things like the vanilla essence that we added, the chocolate, the sugar, they're all gonna combine and create really delicious flavors and some really, really strong smells that will tell us that our cookies are almost ready. Now, once we get to 160 degrees, take uh, 160 degrees, we know that the Maillard reaction has taken place and we don't need to add any more energy to our cookies. Now, we don't actually test them by entering a thermometer. This is why people put down estimated times for cooking. They tell us that after about, in this case, it was about 12 minutes, there's the mixture has reached its required temperature and we don't need to add any more energy to it. So what we then do is we remove the cookies from the oven. We wanna slow down the reaction and we wanna wait for the cookies to get to a temperature where they're safe to touch and safe to eat. So we're gonna hold off a couple more minutes then I'm gonna go and take the cookies out and show you what we do to speed that up. So we're leaving the cookies in the oven for the 12 minutes that was described in the recipe. Like I said, we follow the uh, instructions that we know are gonna work and often recipes will tell you exactly how long to cook them for. Um, it may not be exactly precise. You might need to leave it a little bit longer. You might need to leave, bring it out a little bit earlier. So that's why it's important to know what you're looking for. And I think from a science point of view, there are a few key indicators that we can, we can look for that will help us know when it's right to take our cookies out. So the first thing you'll notice and probably the most obvious thing is the smell. So once the Maillard reaction has taken place at about 152 degrees Celsius, lots of really strong aromas are gonna be released. And you know, it's gonna, that's what's gonna fill up your house, your whole your kitchen, your whole house, whatever it might be. So when you start to smell it, that's when you know that the Maillard reaction has taken place, those, those compounds have been released, the flavors have been released, and they're almost ready to go. The next step would be to actually look at it. So you wanna go and have a look at your, your cookies and have a look to see, are they still kind of shiny on top? So once the heat begins to get into the mixture, the water is released, the water makes its way to the top, and as we've talked about, it starts to evaporate. There might still be a bit of a gloss, a bit of a shine on top of it, you don't want to bring them out if it's, the cookies are still too shiny. That would suggest that they're undercooked and not all the moisture has removed. So you want there to be a very, very small shine in the middle of the cookie. Uh, and that's when you know that it's time to bring it out because the reactions have taken place. The last thing you might want to look for 
is around the edges, have they turned into a bit of a golden brown color? Are they a bit firmer, a bit crispier? Now that could be because the moisture that was actually spreading out that gave it that round shape, that's the hottest part of the cookie. So that has boiled off earlier and has now gone past the boiling stage and you're almost starting to dry it out to a point that's detrimental. So we're gonna look for that when we go and look at our cookies. And then once we see those three things, then we can take them out and leave them to cool. Okay, so we've taken, I've taken the cookies out of the oven. They ended up going for a little bit longer than the 12 minutes that was um, originally described in the recipe, but that's fine. As I said, I was looking for a bit of a Christmas, crisp, crispness around the edge, so the golden brown edges you might not be able to see here, but later on when I hold them up, it might be able to be a bit clearer. I can definitely smell it, even from different parts of the house, we can smell that the smell has gone through. Um, and so that's when we decided, I decided, sorry, that they were ready. So what I want to do now, though, is they've still got a lot of heat energy in them. If that heat energy stays there for too long, then the reaction is going to continue and it's actually going to burn the cookies. So when we take them out of the oven, we want them to cool down as quickly as we can. So to do that, I want to get them away from the tray that they were, they were in the oven with, because that tray has also absorbed a lot of heat energy, and it will be passing that heat energy from the tray into the cookies. So I want to take them away from that, and I'm going to quickly put them on this cooling rack here. Now, this is a part of the demonstration. I'm going to quickly do it with my hands to save time. But when you're doing this at home, definitely don't touch the cookies out of the oven with your hands. Um, use a, a spatula or something like that to make it a little bit easier. But I'm just going to quickly grab them put them onto this cooling tray. And that cooling tray, you can see it's got the airflow underneath it as well. That will allow the cookies to change, to drop in temperature quickly and get them down to a point where they are safe to eat before too many more chemical changes take place. So I'm gonna leave them there and let them cool down. So the cookies are now cooled down. Um, we can see by the shape, they're probably not as, you know, flat and round as we thought they would. Maybe if we'd added more butter, it would have spread out a little bit more, or we didn't put them in, in such a tight and, and high ball, they would have spread more, but that's okay. And when you make your cookies, you might want to flatten them out a little bit to start off with. You might change some ingredients here and there. But at the end of the day, what we've got in front of us is an excellent result of the scientific activity. We've got delicious cookies, we've made them ourselves, we've learned a little bit of science, uh, and I hope you guys all enjoyed it. See you next time.